So the first thing I'm going to do as a teacher is go up to the Apps Launcher button on the top right of the screen here on the Google homepage and choose Google Classroom. Now, Google Classroom is what we would say mission control for teachers and students. It's where I can post all of my work, I can receive work from students, and I can grade and assess it if I want to as well. So to create a new class, I just click this plus button on the top right of the screen and click Create Class. And then I just need to give the class a name. So I'm going to call this one Pearson Space, like so, and click Create. Now, I think this is the quickest and easiest way to create classrooms. It gives you complete control over how many classes you want, whether you want to do a class per class that you teach. And you can even make classrooms for smaller groups of students as well. You can use some third-party tools to sync your classes from a system like Sims or Progresso or whatever it might be that you use. And when you do that, the students are automatically added and moved around as well. So here's what Classroom looks like if you haven't seen it. This is called the stream. It's the first page that you see. And this is really just a space designed for a bit of discussion. And it's also like a news feed. So as I post assignments and so on, there'll be notifications posted into the stream here. So students could come in here and post things. They can comment on each other's posts. You can post things as well. But if you don't like the sound of that, you can actually change the settings here. So I could say that only students can comment on what I post, or actually only I can post or comment on anything that's in here. So this can be really handy if I want to just leave a quick reminder, for example. Now there's a few other tabs at the top of the screen here, and we're gonna work through those in a moment. But before we do, um, I need to add some students. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm going to copy this code here. And so you could have emailed this uh, out to your students or put it on your school or class website, for example. Another way I could do that is to go to the people page and I could directly add a student by clicking this add button just here and then typing in their email address. Now I probably don't wanna do that for a group of 30 students unless I have a single email that invites them all individually. So I'm going to switch over to a student view now and add that student to the class. So here's what it looks like if I'm a student. I'm not a member of any classes yet. All I need to do is click this plus button and choose join class. Now you can see here that I also have the option to create a class, but your admin can disable that so that only teachers are able to create classes if that's something that would be more comfortable for you or your school. So I choose join class. I put in the code like this and click join and then that's gonna add the student to the class and they will have access now to everything that I post in that class as well. There we go, so it looks really similar and you see they don't have the option to post in the stream because I disabled that a moment ago as the teacher. So let's jump back to the teacher view. Here I am on that people page. I can see that my first student is in here now and one nice feature is that we can invite guardians for each student as well. Now if I do that, it means that I get to add a guardian email address and they get a daily or weekly update of the work that has been set for their child. It's up to them how often they receive it. They don't get access to the work that's been done. They just see the instructions that you've posted along with an assignment. So I find that's a really good way to start a conversation with a student about the work they've been doing. Maybe if they're not being forthcoming with their parents when they're at home. The other tab that we see at the top here is a grades tab. Right now it's completely empty because I've not set or graded any work, but effectively this turns into an online grade book where I can easily see at a glance all of the different scores for all of the different pieces of work. Now the main page that we're going to use in Google Classroom is called Classwork. So it's on this screen where I'm going to post all of my assignments, maybe materials that I want students to have. I might have a quick question, for example. And the way I do that is super simple. I just need to remember this one button that says create, and that gives me all of the different options that I need. I'm going to choose assignment for this one. And here's what it looks like when I need to set an assignment. So I'm gonna give the assignment a title. We're gonna call it mission to Mars. And if I wanted to, I could leave some instructions, but I'm gonna leave this blank for the sake of this demo. And I could create a document right here, but I've actually already prepared something. And so I'm going to choose this add option here. And when I do that, I get the option to choose something from my Google Drive. I can link to somewhere on the web. I can add any other type of file from my computer, or I can link directly to a YouTube video. Now I have a document already ready to go in Google Drive. It's called Mission to Mars. It's a really super simple worksheet. So I'm going to add that here. And when I add a Google document like this or a Google Sheets file or Google Slides, for example, 
I get this extra option over on the right hand side. Now by default, it says students can view the file. So that's really helpful if this is just a page where I want them to read and learn or take notes perhaps. I've also got the option for students to edit the file. That actually means that we would all be able to collaborate on the same file, which is one of the great things about Google Docs. You can have up to 100 people working at once in a single document. Or I can say, I want to make a copy for each student of this document that I've set here. So I'm going to choose make a copy for each student, and that's going to take all the hard work off of my hands and just do it all automatically in the background for me. Now, before I click assign, I've got a few other options over on the right hand side here. I can set a piece of work for multiple classes at once. This could be really helpful if you have a responsibility across a whole subject or year group. Uh, perhaps maybe you're the numeracy lead and you want to set a piece of maths work across the, the whole school even. Um, and I can set individually for different students as well. So if I wanted to differentiate the work, maybe I have slightly different versions of this assignment. I can choose the individual students that this would go to. My class is very small at the moment, though. It only has one student. So I'm going to leave this as it is for now. I can also assign a points value, or I can say this is ungraded. Um, I'm going to leave this as it is for now. And the main thing to remember about all of these options is that we've designed Classroom to be really flexible so that you don't actually have to do your assessment through here. You might just decide that this is an easy way to get documents and materials out to students. Um, so things like the due date you can set, but you don't have to, and topics as well are just a way to organize your classwork page. So I'm gonna call the, I'm gonna create a topic called writing uh, and put this assignment in that topic. Now we also recently introduced rubrics. Rubrics is quite an American term I find, but it's essentially a mark scheme. So I could create a really simple mark scheme, perhaps where I mark spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Uh, and I might maybe have something like pass, uh, and then merit, and maybe distinction, like this. And I can give them a different points value too. And maybe if I wanted to, I could copy those and do the same thing for punctuation and grammar as well. And when I come to grade this work, if I want to grade it in Classroom, I can just select the area that the student has reached to save me having to kind of manually decide the number of points and then add it up as I go. So I'm going to save that rubric. That's attached to the assignment, and the students will see it as well. And then finally, we have originality reports. We're not going to go into detail on this today, but essentially, if you turn this on, it allows you and the student to scan their work and perhaps check for if they've forgotten to reference anything that maybe they've quoted from a book or from the internet. And we check the work against Google's search database uh, to highlight any passages that perhaps they've forgotten to do that. Now, when I assign, I can schedule this as well. So if you're super organized, you could schedule all of your assignments for the upcoming week or term even if you wanted to. You could save this as a draft and then just manually assign it at a later date or just assign it right now, which is what I'm going to do. So I've assigned this piece of classwork. I'm going to switch back now to the student view so you can see what it looks like from their side. So back over in the classroom here as a student, if I go to the classwork page, what we're gonna see is this assignment appear on this page and I'll be able to go in and access that sheet that the teacher set for me. So remember I created that writing topic, so I can see it organized under this topic now. And Mission to Mars is the assignment that I've been given. And rather than go straight through to the document, I'm just gonna click View Assignment here to give us this one page overview of everything that I need. So on the right hand side, you can see the document that has been set for me. I do have the option to add other files as well if there's other things I need to hand in. And I can see the rubric or mark scheme that was created as well, so I know how I'm going to be graded for this piece of work. So as the student then, let's go ahead and open up this document here. It's a really simple document, so let's just fill this out. Um, add my name here and an answer here. It's as simple as that. Now, I could hand in this piece of work. You see I have this turn in button at the top of the screen here, um, but I don't have to. Even if I don't hand it in, because the teacher made a copy of this automatically for every student, they already have access to see the work as it's being done. So if I just switch back now to the teacher view, as the teacher, if I go through into this assignment now, it will show me all of the different students that I have. Again, I've only got one in this class, and I can see their document already. So I can click to open up this document like so, 
And as the students working on it, I would see what they're doing because of the way that real-time collaboration works in Google Docs. And the way that I would grade this usually is to highlight some of the text in the document here and click to leave a comment on the right-hand side. So I might say something like, how would you take enough, perhaps like this, and comment. Now, often when you're grading, you're going to be using the same kind of comments over and over. And so we actually have a comment bank built in here where I've got a few different comments like this. And so if I was to highlight and leave another comment, you'll see as I start typing uh, different pieces of feedback, it comes up with the suggestions from my comment bank that I can easily just add in like so. And then on the right-hand side, I can put in my grade if I want to give it a grade. I can grade using the rubric as well by choosing the different sections. Um, and if I had multiple students, I can really quickly go from one student to another using this list at the top or using the arrows up here too. And this is also the same screen. If I'd enabled originality reports, I'd be able to run that report and see whether the student had copied anything from the internet and forgotten to leave a reference. And as the teacher here, you see that I've got this return option. Now, if I was to click that, it means that this grade would be released to the student and they would see it. And you see, I can do that even if the student hasn't turned it in. And so we really try to keep that flexibility in mind. You don't necessarily want to have to chase every student if you've already got access to their work. It doesn't really matter at this point if they clicked hand in or not. So that's what setting an assignment and a brief bit of grading looks like in Google Classroom. And again, you might decide just to carry on grading in a different system that you're using or in your paper mark book and just use Classroom as a way to distribute the work. Either way, it's absolutely fine. And my advice generally is just find the best thing that works for you that is easy to use for everyone involved. So I'm going to jump back into Classroom really quickly here. And in the current situation, there's obviously lots of remote work happening. And we've seen schools approach this in many different ways. Some schools sending home paper packets of work for students to complete, perhaps uploading pictures of some of that work. You could do that with Google Classroom. Um, some using something like Google Classroom to set and assess and update students and stay connected with them uh, through comments on that work as well. And some choosing to do live video calls as well, whether that's for a quick introduction to a lesson or a concept or for a whole lesson even. So what we've done is integrated Google Meet, which is our video conferencing solution. It's part of G Suite, included for free in G Suite for Education. And we've created an integration with Google Classroom. So you can see at the top of the page here, I have the option to generate a Meet link. And it's one click. It generates a link for me. And then I could say to the students, OK, let's jump into this video call at 10 AM today, for example. And you see, I decide whether that link is vid visible to students or not. And what's great about this link is that if I'm the first one in as the teacher and make sure I'm the first one out, I can remove the other students if I need to, then the students won't be able to join this video call when I'm not there. Now that is also dependent on your administrator making sure that they've disabled the ability to create meetings for students, uh, which is best practice that we're seeing in schools where only teachers are able to go and create uh, meetings, but students are able to join them. And so I'm gonna actually hide that from students for now and click save. And then I might post something here in the stream that says, let's meet at 10 a.m. I could then make this link visible. We all join the meeting. I do my introduction. We leave the meeting. And then they go and work independently. And to show you what this looks like when you join a meeting, students don't have to download anything. They literally just click the link. If it's the first time they've used Google Meet, they would need to press allow or block for their microphone or webcam. And then they literally just click to join the meeting like so. And it is as simple as that. I've not had to download any extra um, apps or extensions or anything, I can just join through my browser. So if I already have access to Classroom, whether it's through my phone or a laptop, I'll definitely be able to access Google Meet. So that's a super quick overview of Classroom, and I hope that's given you an idea of how it can be used to set uh, and assess work and organize work in the classwork screen as well through topics and so on. What I'd really like to show you is how you can also create self-marking quizzes in Google Drive. So we have an app called Google Forms. It's a type of file that you can create really quickly and easily in Google Drive. It's really great if ever you need to do a quick survey. But a couple of years ago, we also introduced the ability to create self-marking quizzes. So if you've used Google Forms before, but you've never created a quiz, you can actually click the Settings icon here, go to the Quizzes tab, and you just toggle this option to make this a quiz. 
Now, there's a few different options we're not going to dive into just here, but you can decide whether students get to see the scores and their answers and the correct answers right away, or whether you manually release them at a later date. The other thing that I've got ticked here is locked mode for Chromebooks. So if your students are using a managed Chromebook from the school and you turn on locked mode, it means that they will only be able to see the quiz on their screen when they take it. They won't have uh, the option to open other tabs and so on. For the sake of this demo, I'm actually gonna turn that off and click save. And here's what my quiz looks like. So I've got a few different questions. And if I click into this one, you'll see that when I have a question like this, I can see the answer key. And I can set what the correct answer is. I can set a points value. And I can set different feedback for if they get that question right or wrong. And I can do things like link to web pages or to a YouTube video to help them. This is really good if you are doing a flipped learning model, but particularly helpful for this remote learning model that we have at the moment. If you want students to do something at the beginning or end of the topic, so you get a better understanding of where they're at. What have they learned? What are the big gaps across the whole class? I can do this for all different types of questions as well. So I have a short answer question here. I've typed in the different answers to that short answer question. And all you would need to do is just go and post this in Classroom. Um, you could copy the links. So if I go to preview this form, here's what it looks like. You could post this link in Google Classroom um, or directly from Google Classroom, choose this form, which is just saved in your Google Drive like anything else. And if I go through and answer these questions, like this and submit the form. I've got this set up so the students can actually view their score right away. And it will tell them whether they got the question right or wrong. It gives them the feedback like so. And that feedback includes those links or anything else that I've left in. Now on the background for you as the teacher, you can see all of the responses coming in like this and we'll give you some handy analysis. So you start to understand, okay, what was the most frequently missed question? What are students getting wrong most often? Because that's probably the gap that we need to fill in now and go back and relearn or, or recover that topic that we missed. So I think this is really helpful. Uh, my favorite thing about Google Forms is that you can click this little spreadsheet icon here. You can create a spreadsheet of all of the responses. And as students answer the form as they submit it, a new row gets automatically added to this spreadsheet where all of that information comes through in one place and you've got the score right there as well. If you set this in Google Classroom, you can even have Google Classroom import these scores automatically so they all get added to that gradebook in one place as well.